you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before moving on. We can begin by drawing a simple picture that represents the information described. So here we have initially particles A and B held together by the spring, and then the spring is released, sending particle A flying off to the left and particle B flying off to the right. We know that initially, the only form of energy present is potential energy. It is the potential energy that's stored in the spring. But then once the particles are sent flying apart, we have kinetic energies. And we can label the kinetic energy of particle A, K1, and the kinetic energy of particle B, K2. Next, we want to consider the conservation of momentum in this scenario. And we know that initially the momentum is zero because particles A and B are not moving. But then after they are released from the spring, they are moving. And so we have momentum for particle A with M1V1 and momentum for particle B with M2V2. Now recall the question stated that the mass of particle A is two times the mass of particle B. In symbolic form, we have M1 equaling two times M2. Remember, we're using subscripts of one for particle A and subscripts of two for particle B. With this result, we can substitute two M2 into the M1 of the momentum equation. Conveniently, we can divide each term on both sides of the equation by m2 so that we can eliminate m2 from the momentum equation. We could then subtract 2v1 from both sides of the equation. And we can then see that the velocity of object 2 is equal to twice the velocity of object 1, but in the opposite direction. Now, it's going to turn out that we really only need the magnitudes of the velocities, not their directions. So what we can essentially do is take the absolute value of both sides of this equation. So we have the result that the magnitude of velocity 2 is twice the magnitude of velocity 1. This is a result we want to hold on to and refer back to shortly. Let's turn next to the kinetic energy of particle A, what we have called K1. We know that kinetic energy is equal to one half times the mass of the object times its velocity squared. Now we're going to try to get this in terms of K2. And to do that, we're going to once again recall that the mass of object one or particle A was equal to twice M2. So we're going to substitute that in right here. And then for V1, we can look back at this result. And if we divided this result on both sides by two, we would see that V1, or at least the magnitude of V1, is equal to one half the magnitude of V2. So we're going to plug that in for V1. We can simplify this a little bit. This 1 half multiplied by the 2, they're going to cancel each other out. And then we can square the 1 half to make 1 fourth and also square the V2. And so here we have 1 fourth times M2 V2 squared. We'll notice that we can rewrite the 1 fourth in a bit of a clever way. We can write that as 1 half times 1 half and then we still have the m2 v2 squared. The reason that that's a neat way of writing it is because right here, this 1 half m2 v2 squared, that's the expression for the kinetic energy of particle two. In other words, that right there is k2. So we can actually rewrite this entire expression as just 1 half times k2. And so now we see that k1 is simply half of k2. We can next turn to the final phase of this question, and that is using the conservation of energy to actually figure out these kinetic energies. We note that the initial potential energy stored in the spring is equal to the sum of the kinetic energies after the spring is released. We have determined that K1 was equal to half of K2, so we can replace K1 in the energy equation with 1 half K2. Of course, then we can combine these like terms to make 3 halves K2. The initial potential energy stored in the spring was given as 60 joules. And when we finish off solving this, we should get 40 joules is equal to K2. So that's going to be the kinetic energy of what we labeled as particle B in the original picture. Since K2 is 40 joules, and we know that K1 is just half of K2, it should be relatively straightforward to see that K1 turns out to be 20 joules. And that's the kinetic energy of particle A. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, please note that you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I will do my best to provide a video solution to it.